Hi, I'm Doug Lundquist from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and I'll be presenting on the paper, A Blockchain-Based Data Sharing Scheme for Intervehicular Safety Applications. This presentation proposes a model for vehicular safety applications in environments where roadside infrastructure is unavailable and communication is intervehicular. To help prevent vehicular collisions, vehicles can exchange data at short intervals about their recent trajectories. Our model integrates blockchain technology to verify and store recent historical data combined with controlled flooding to limit message propagation to the vicinity of vehicles in the same blockchain group. Recent research estimates a thousand lives could be saved annually in the United States alone by widespread adoption of intervehicular safety applications. This image shows a typical case. The blue vehicle has the right of way and is about to enter the intersection. The red vehicle is also about to enter the intersection, but is hidden from the blue vehicle's line of sight. With intervehicular communication, the blue vehicle could be warned in time to prevent the collision. With intervehicular communication, there is the concern that malicious vehicles might send false data. This is especially true for data received secondhand. For example, suppose a vehicle A advertises its trajectory to another vehicle B, which can directly observe A. Then B could reject any bad data from A. But suppose B forwards data to another vehicle C that can't directly observe A. How could C be reasonably sure that the data about A is correct? That's where blockchain comes in. Updates have to be verified by at least a simple majority of the group before they're considered to be correct. Blockchain has received a great deal of attention in the last few years as many cryptocurrencies sharply multiplied in value. In essence, a blockchain is a sequence of blocks where each block is a set of verified data records that generates a validated code to start the next block. Once a block is confirmed as correct, it cannot be altered without altering the validated code that underlies the subsequent blocks. Thus, any authorized, unauthorized alteration will be detectable by other members of the block. This built-in verification stability makes blockchain very useful for cases without any trusted authority or even trust between the blockchain group members themselves. There are many reasons why blockchain models would be preferred for vehicular safety applications. For one, installing, operating, maintaining, and upgrading roadside network infrastructure everywhere would be expensive with much of the work happening in low population rural areas. Second, Many drivers might be understandably reluctant to be continuously identified and monitored by transportation agencies while driving. Blockchain models would allow vehicles to maintain some privacy while still enabling data exchange for safety application. Another key issue of blockchain is membership. Blockchain, our blockchain model needs to assign vehicles to groups and then manage their memberships. Our model is designed to accommodate group changes. Past blocks are stable despite future group membership changes, but we have not yet deeply analyzed the membership problem as far as ideal group sizes for vehicular safety applications. Generally though, large vehicle groups would be more robust against blockchain manipulation, but also require more time to confirm data blocks. The bigger the group, the longer it would take for data to reach a majority of it. Additionally, there is the question of how to manage group turnover as some vehicles inevitably exit from the group as vehicles follow their disparate travel paths. Likewise, new groups will need to be merged from group remnants or otherwise created. These are interesting topics for future research. The two main flavors of blockchain validation are proof of work and proof of stake. In general, proof of work is more secure, but also slower and more resource intensive than proof of stake. We take an agnostic viewpoint as far as these two models, but we do expect the most likely approach is a hybrid layered approach where proof of stake is used for most validations, but still intermittently supported by proof of work to make the cost of sustained blockchain manipulations prohibitively high. We want to balance the reliability of the blockchain against the speed of delivering relevant data within each block's group of members. Accordingly, we propose structuring the blocks and records as follows. 
block structure. We propose that each block will be localized to its group to allow faster propagation and verification of safety data. We further propose that each block will contain a fixed number of records per vehicle. Given that the group membership is known, this creates a known structure for the block without delays around negotiation, nego negotiating the composition of each block. Record structure. Each record is a trajectory segment covering a known time interval. We propose each record further be a trajectory from a preset time interval. This fully sets out which records will be contained in a particular block. There will inevitably be latency between when the records are generated and when they can be verified in the blockchain. However, individual vehicles can still use any received but not fully verified data for their own safety applications. Once an old block is verified and added to the blockchain, new records may begin to be verified and included for subsequent blocks. We do not have a specific recommendation for the appropriate timeout when an incomplete block must be confirmed despite missing records. Dynamic approaches to this problem are another interesting future research topic. Self-balancing supply demand, or SBSD, was designed as a way to manage balancing multiple competing data pushing operations in an environment of limited bandwidth. At the level of individual nodes, one node might receive more incoming messages than it is able to forward. In SBSD, each message is assigned a dynamic relevance metric, and each node forwards as many of the most relevant messages as its transmission capacity permits. In SBSD, the relevance metric combines the message's age, the time since it was created, distance, how far it is from its point of origin, typically measured in hops, and frequency, the number of times the message was created or requested independently in the network. Age and distance both increase each time a message is forwarded and decrease its relevance. All else equal, this drop in relevance will eventually halt its further propagation as other messages stored at a node, newer and from nearer, will be more relevant. Frequency, however, is a multiplier for relevance and messages with higher frequency travel farther and persist longer. The consequence of this model is dynamic controlled flooding. When the network is busy, with more new messages being generated per unit time, each individual message will not be forwarded as far or for as long. But when the message generation rate is low, messages will travel farther, potentially reaching every node in the network. SBSD is also designed to deliver messages quickly and reliably. In general, the most recently received messages are immediately forwarded with a binary exponential delay for their retransmissions. This approach lets new messages quickly propagate through the network and the retransmissions increase the delivery reliability, especially to nodes near the messages sources. For environments of high node density, these redundant transmissions can be reduced to allow greater message throughput with a minimal reduction in their ultimate delivery. Individually, each message tends to quickly reach its maximum extent, then gradually stop being retransmitted at the nodes farthest from the source. This behavior generally arises with all messages, dynamically adjusting each message's propagation depth according to local message generation rates. By adjusting each message's frequency in accordance with the blockchain group size, the propagation area for each message can more closely approximate the spatial distribution of the group's vehicles without any centralized control. Now, we'll give a simple overview of our model's process. Record creation. To create a new record, a vehicle will announce its own trajectories and other nearby vehicles will observe and confirm it. After a vehicle confirms the record, it adds it to its own version of the corresponding block. Periodically, vehicles will share their own versions of the block, allowing recipients to update their versions of the block. When the block is complete or the window for additional updates closes, vehicles will finalize their version of the block. The majority approved block will be used to create the next block. Note that not all vehicles may agree at this point. 
for example, due to fraud by malicious actors. But the majority of vote will create the new block validation and malicious actors may dispute it, but will not be able to override it. But what happens when vehicles disagree? This is an important policy question. In the long term, the blockchain will hold the correct data, but how should disputes be handled in the short run? Further, what sanctions should be imposed on suspected malicious vehicles? Since the options here depend strongly on the blockchain model, proof of work versus proof of stake, we defer this topic to future research. We propose the mechanics of gathering and updating the blockchain as follows. First, let us assume that the set of vehicles belonging to the block is already set. Then, each vehicle periodically advertises its current block of recent trajectories, including its own. Vehicles receiving that advertisement will verify it against their own observations and their own current state of their block. If the records match, the receiving vehicle appends its own ID to the advertised trajectories as a way of confirming that its belief in that trajectory. Different trajectories are stored separately with their lists of verifying vehicle IDs. Eventually, the block will be confirmed by majority or supermajority according to the blockchain validation model in place. Under normal circumstances, blockchain models provide strong defenses against isolated malicious actors improperly altering data. Unless these isolated actors can convince many others to agree with their data, they will simply be outvoted. When every vehicle is in communication range of several others, it is very unlikely for an isolated malicious actor to succeed. For example, foreseeable attacks include altering trajectory data and altering vehicle IDs and lists confirming a given trajectory. Let's consider those. Suppose a vehicle announces a false trajectory. When a malicious vehicle alters its own trajectory, other nearby vehicles, which have observed it, will be able to immediately recognize and disapprove the update. Altering trajectory data. When a malicious vehicle changes received trajectory data, it would be expected that numerous other upstream vehicles have already received the correct data and would continue sharing it with other vehicles downstream of the malicious one. For a time, some vehicles might treat the two trajectories as both potentially valid, ultimately the malicious one would eventually be outvoted. Similarly, when a malicious vehicle changes the list of vehicles supporting a trajectory, the upstream ones will continue sharing the correct data with the downstream ones. Even in its own vicinity, an isolated malicious vehicle will not be able to win the voting process. However, there are some special cases and configurations where malicious vehicles could conduct minority attacks. We'll discuss those very soon. Having presented our model, we can now discuss a few directions for future research beyond the ones already noted. Simulation module including blockchain. Although we have tested SBSD extensively with the JIST mobile ad hoc network simulator, we have not developed a blockchain module to run along with it. Creating that module will enable evaluating how different blockchain models and operational parameters lead to different outcomes. Performance comparisons. Most directly, we can consider standard performance measures of speed and reliability. That is, how many vehicle trajectory updates can be handled within a group before reliability begins to noticeably drop off. What percentage of a group can expect to receive messages within a given time horizon? Specific to our blockchain model, we can also consider how long a group should allow for a block to be finalized and verified. Outcomes from malicious vehicles. Certainly, the potential damage caused by malicious vehicles should be investigated. In a large group, a small number of malicious vehicles should be unable to validate bad data in the blockchain. However, attacks might be possible when malicious vehicles can form a bottleneck in the group, dominate the data flows through it, and successfully execute a minority attack on the blockchain by altering data and getting other group members to confirm it. Can those attacks be reliably recognized, predicted, and prevented? 
managing fluid group membership. Finally, we can consider how to handle group membership fluctuations. Although our model proposes that vehicles will belong to multiple groups simultaneously to ensure a continuous receipt of nearby vehicles' trajectories, we should investigate whether any specific further refinements are advisable. Thanks for your attention, and soon we'll be opening the floor to questions.